हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू दिस वीडियो सीरीज ऑन सल्यूटिंग वीमेन इन हिस्ट्री ह्यूमन राइट्स और द बेसिक राइट्स एंड इट बिलोंग्स टू एवरी पर्सन इन द वर्ल्ड फ्रॉम बर्थ अंटिल डेथ एंड देर इज अ ग्रेट को रिलेशन बिटवीन ह्यूमन राइट्स एंड डिवाइन राइट based on the historical perspectives it can be stated here that all pre modern regimes are more or less based on divine right further the equality act of the modern times which also goes with the religion and belief says that it is unlawful and unfair to discriminate any human being on the grounds of sex race religion caste or any other reasons based on these facts and observations it is important to mention here that the islamic theology has a strong democratic spirit and enormous implications towards the emancipation of women The Holy Quran does not deny women the privilege of leading a political life or heading a state and many verses of the Quran clearly mention that women have been given absolute equality with men. Moreover, looking into the history of Islam, it is clearly known that women held important leadership roles in their communities. Khadija, the wife of Prophet Muhammad, was a businesswoman. Hazrat Aisha was a strong spiritual and political leader and was highly esteemed by the Muslim community. Most importantly, the Quran and Hadith shed light on how Islam regards women. from the clipping you can understand that in the holy quran almighty allah endorses the capability of some women to successfully rule their people therefore the spirit and word of the quran does not prevent women from aspiring to leadership there are several examples of muslim women as leaders of states provinces and sects during several centuries of islamic history for instance The Yemeni queen Arwa ruled the Sulayd dynasty for 7 decades and even issued coins in her own name. Besides, there were women soldiers such as Nusaiba bin Kaab, Umm Amra, Aisha, Kahula and Wafera who fought in a valorous manner during the medieval ages. With this background, I am extremely proud and happy to highlight here the most striking example of a Muslim woman in the Indian subcontinent during the medieval times. She is none other than Sultan Razia, the only woman in India crowned as queen in her own right, merit and talent. It is important to point out here that she made this happen during the time when the sultanate's period's political structure and the ruling elite did not encourage women to participate in politics moreover sultan razia acceded to the throne transcending gender distinctions and emerged as a real woman leader in the delhi sultanate era razia was born around the year 1205 ad to sultan shamsuddin iltutmish and kutub begum she had benefited from the tutelage of her father to the maximum when she had lived with him in the kush e firozi that is the royal palace as a child and adolescent razia had little contact with the other women of the palace and therefore she had not adopted the customary behavior of women in the muslim society sultan iltutmish took personal interest in his daughter's education and training by the time razia turned 13 she was acknowledged as an accomplished archer and horse rider who would frequently accompany her father in his military expeditions she took keen interest in male sports the army organization and assuming command and that developed in her the qualities of bravery responsibility and leadership according to historian minaju siraj sultan iltmish considered his daughter razia equal to 20 of his sons in ability during her father's rule she assisted him in the affairs of the state and never hesitated in giving her opinion therefore sultan iltmish nominated her to the throne of delhi as he faced with the choice of a successor on the untimely death of his eldest son prince nasiruddin mahmud in 1229 ad sultan iltumish selected his daughter razia as she was the eldest of his surviving children and had already been marked out for uncommon sagacity and political insight he did not stop here and in order to train razia still further 
Iltutmish left her in charge of the administration in Delhi when he was engaged in operations with the siege of the Gwalior fort during 1231 AD. On his return, he was so impressed with her performance that he decided to appoint her as his successor and even ordered Mushrifi Mumalu to issue a farman, elevating Razia as successor to the Delhi Sultanate. A commemorative coin was also struck in silver, possibly issued as a medallion with the name of the Crown Princess Razia, inscribed along with that of her father, Sultan El Tutmish. It is really proud to state here that during the period of 13th century, Sultan Iltutmish had no complexes when it came to recognizing the merits of a woman. For him, merit and justice went hand in hand. This was the essence of his understanding of Islam. On his deathbed, Iltutmish nominated Razia as his successor. However, her accession was challenged by the Turkish nobles. Not wanting to see a woman ruler, her stepbrother Ruknuddin Fairoz Shah was set up to the throne by the nobles. However, after assuming the royal power, Ruknuddin Fairoz indulged in worldly pleasures and left the governance to his mother Shah Turkan, dissatisfying the citizens of Delhi. Further, Shah Turkan was an extremely jealous and dominating person who started working on a scheme to eliminate all potential rivals to her son's throne. The first victim was a young prince, Qutubdin, who was brutally murdered and it was followed by a failed attempt on the life of Razia. At this point of time, Razia retaliated to the ill designs of her enemies and decided to appeal to the people of Delhi to support her. In fact, she used one of her father's policies, that is, anyone seeking justice from the Sultan should wear dyed clothes and he knew that the individual was oppressed and required justice. This was done by Razia to gain the attention and support from the people to regain her throne. On the day of Friday, as an aggrieved person, Razia, wearing the red garment, walked from her palace to the people who assembled for the special prayers and appealed to them for help against her stepbrother Ruknuddin Fairoz and the evil designs of her stepmother Shah Turkan. Luckily, Razia's plan worked out well since the people who heard her speech supported her claim. Historian Ibn Battuta writes here that Razia's speech stirred the emotions of people and they seized the royal palace, deposed and killed both Ruknuddin Fairoz and his mother on 9th November 1236 AD. A remarkable event occurred over here during this time, that is, the common people crowned Razia as Sultan on 10th November 1236 AD. Sultan Razia assumed sovereignty, adopting the title of Jalaluddin Razia. As a ruler, she refused to be addressed as Sultana as it meant to be a wife or mistress of a sultan and insisted on being addressed as sultan always. She adopted gender-neutral attire and appears in public unveiled, dressed in men's clothes, rode like a man, armed with bow, quiver and sword. Sultan Razia dressed in this fashion not only during the military campaigns but also during the time of meeting her subjects and listening to their grievances. She openly exercised power upon her accession to the throne and ordered coins to be minted in her name with specific inscriptions as being showed in the clipping. As soon as she has become the ruler of Delhi, there were struggles and conflicts both internally and externally by the nobles. The financial condition of the Sultanate was also completely unacceptable due to her brother's extravagance and mismanagement. But Sultan Razia proved to be very brave and enthusiastic and became more assertive and confident during the times of crisis. She faced the grave financial situation with her ideal tact and diplomacy which enabled her to govern efficiently. Moreover, Sultan Razia's military skill with administrative ability established her firmness in the central administration along with the support gained from the military leaders and the common citizens of Delhi. Sensing the support of commoners to Sultan Razia, some of her enemies pledged loyalty, but the other nobles ranged themselves against her and laid military operations around Delhi. But she resolved to break the rebel coalition and pitched her tent along with the army on the bank of the river Emuna to confront the seditious nobles Malik Jani, Malik Kuchi, Fakhruddin and Nizam al-Mulk. As an outcome, Malik Jani was killed. Malik Kuchi and his brother Fakhruddin were taken into captivity and finally put to death. Nizam al-Mulk, the arch-rival of Sultan Razia, took shelter in the Sirmur Hills 
where he met an unheroic death. These events boosted the prestige of Sultan Razia and provincial governors submitted to her authority and also agreed to pay annual tribute to her. Sultan Razia consolidated her position by undertaking a lot of military campaigns in order to suppress the uprisings of the nobles. The first and the foremost campaign to consolidate her position was against Ranthambur and she dispatched Kutubdin Hazan Ghori to confront the rebellious Rajputs. The royal army broke the operations of enemies and set the people free who were imprisoned for long in the fort. Another important campaign was undertaken against Gwalior in 1238 AD and the siege proved to be a long drawn out affair. Malik Izzuddin Khabir Khan in 1239 to 40 AD came in open conflict with Sultan Razia. Escaping towards the frontier before the royal forces led personally by Sultan Razia was at last confronted by the Mongols across the river Chenab and Malik Khan was thus compelled to turn back and make his submission. Thus Sultan Razia crushed the uprisings with all her might and the revolted nobles once again accepted her sovereignty. Sultan Razia created a new office for the chief of the army with the title of Kutluk Khan. She appointed nobles of confidence so that in times of crisis she could depend on their loyalty and support. Besides, some of the higher posts were given to non-Turkish Muslims primarily to curb the power of Turkish nobility. And one such official was Jamaluddin Yakut, an Abyssinian slave who was appointed as Amiri Akhur, that is a master of the stables. He perfectly acted as a mentor for Sultan Razia and accompanied her on various occasions. This decision of Sultan Razia invited staunch opposition from the Turkish nobles who felt that they were being deprived of their privileges. As a result, the nobles made a plan to revolt against her by assassinating her character and casted rumours about her relationship with Jamaluddin Yakut. The most important rebel against Sultan Razia was the governor of Batinda, Malik Iktiaruddin Althunia, who formed an alliance against Sultan Razia by helping her brother Maizuddin Bahram Shah to take control of the throne. Therefore, in 1240 AD, she had to take her arms in order to suppress the revolt of Altunia. With elaborate arrangements, she moved ahead to meet the rebel, but about halfway, the Turkish nobles in her army revolted against her. Against these heavy odds, Sultan Razia could not stand for long and got defeated. In this stiff conflict, Yakut was killed and the Sultan was captured and sent to the fort of Batinda. The nobles and state officers of Sultan Razia helped the rebel Altunia and he imprisoned Sultan Razia at Kila Mubarak. Further, the Turkish officers elevated Prince Bahram Shah to the throne occupying offices of importance ignoring completely the services and sacrifices of Altunia. Knowing this, Altunia was shocked at such treatment as he expected a reward for his rebellion. Capitalizing on the situation, Razia consoled the shocked and grieved Altunia who offered to marry her. The proposal was accepted by Razia, which was purely a political move and the only way to retrieve her lost position. For Altunia, also this matrimonial alliance was an opportunity to avenge his insult at the hands of the nobles. Therefore, he freed Razia from the fort of Batinda, married her and started preparations to regain his position. After a few days, Razia and her husband decided to seize and reclaim the lost Sultanate of Delhi. She along with Altunia collected an army of Kokars, Jards, Rajputs and some Turkish nobles and marched towards Delhi in the month of September to October 1240 AD. And her half-brother Sultan Bahram Shah also marched against them with an army. The two armies met near Delhi and obstinate conflict ensued in which Razia and Altunia were defeated and driven back. When they reached Kaital near Haryana, all their soldiers deserted them. And it is very disheartening to state here that both Razia and her husband fell into the hands of her brother's conspirators and were massacred together on the same day. Thus, Sultan Razia died in anonymity at the young age of 35 on 14th October 1240 AD and it was much later a tomb was erected over her grave which lies among the narrow lanes of Old Delhi. However, there is also a claim that the tomb of Sultan Razia is situated at Kaital, Haryana in the northwestern suburbs of the city. Sultan Razia exhibited her skill and competence 
in handling day-to-day -day administration and was well versed in the art of maintaining her people's welfare. For doing this, she combated interviews and displayed a remarkable insight into military tactics, resourcefully implemented her independent decisions and diplomatically reconciled the Ikta holders. The chief merit of Sultan Razia was her ability to rise above the prejudices of her age and times. She was very particular about the welfare of her soldiers and often gave them liberal gifts in order to keep them happy and contented. Another interesting feature in her administration is that the citizens of Delhi had supported her unhesitatingly. Due to this reason, while making official appointments, Sultan Razia gave due significance to public opinion. She was also very keen in the development of education and established Madrasa-e-Naziriya, which became a center of learning. Being a secular leader, Sultan Razia prioritized both traditional and scientific education and established a host of schools, academies, centers for research and public libraries. Indeed, Sultan Razia was extremely talented and set to recite the Holy Quran with correct pronunciation and offered prayers in a proper manner. She was also fond of music and gave royal patronage to the musicians and it is to be mentioned here that she herself composed verses under the no diploma of Shireen. Besides, she had a fair knowledge of several other sciences and possessed all the qualities necessary for a wise ruler. Thus, Sultan Razia carried out the administration of Delhi with great tactfulness, diplomacy and courage. Looking into her personality, Sultan Razia possessed great leadership qualities and she impressed everybody by her ability, love of justice, recognition of merit and capacity for hard work. The brief rule of Sultan Razia has earned rich compliments from the great historians like Minajus Siraj, Barani and Farishta. They all say that Sultan Razia endeavoured to play the king in all possible ways. But the proud Turkish nobles could not reconcile themselves to the rule of a woman and brought about her downfall in a disgraceful manner. The tragic end of Sultan Razia clearly shows that it is not always very easy to overcome popular prejudice, but she proved convincingly that as a ruler, she was far more capable than the men who succeeded her. From the historical records, we all know that in the early years of 13th century, fierce warriors were fighting to rule over Delhi. But among the warriors, Sultan Razia emerged as the only female sovereign. Her accession to the throne carries great political significance in the history of the Delhi Sultanate because it shows the intellectual maturity of the Turkish mind in accepting a woman as a ruler. It also clearly indicates the fact that there is nothing in Islam which bars women from public office, although it was taboo and contrary to Islamic culture of those times. Sultan Razia bravely defied conservative traditions and proved for the first time to the country that Gender was not a barrier in ability. The example set by her became a great source of inspiration and encouragement to the other royal women to participate in politics gradually all over the country. According to the authentic historical sources, although her rule lasted for few years, Sultan Razia left her sparkles on several events and issues. She occupies a remarkable place and rose to the occasion in order to fulfill her responsibilities, a fact even her worst critics can't deny. Such was the glorious period of Sultan Razia and she strengthened her hands by roping in the support of the people of Delhi. She stands as the unique distinction of being the only empress who ever occupied the throne of Delhi and had an important legacy of female rule in India. Her legacy has been memorialized in coins, books, television serial and films. Sultan Razia's debut to power shows her politically alert personality and every single woman of the modern world 
should understand and remember her unparalleled strength and remarkable talents in order to build their own self image with all these facts highlighted in this video sultan razia the one and the only is a woman to be given a big salute in history thank you for watching and i will see you all in the next video with another woman personality Please like, share and subscribe to this channel.